Yeah, it's based on a set of early bird Jenny plans, which Dennis Wiley drew up. Now I, the Canuck version, the JN4C, which was built in uh, during World War I under license to, to Curtis in New York, the C models, the British changed around a little bit. They put a different tail shape on. They put four ailerons instead of two. Um, some minor other changes, but probably the most noticeable is they used five degrees of wing stagger instead of ten. And that's the reason I built this one as a Canuck, because I had a CG problem with my big butt in the back seat. And I wanted to move the top wing rearward, and moving it to a five degree stagger moved it about seven inches. So, uh, so I built a Canuck. What is uh, this airplane then, you originally designed it or built it basically from a set of plans, like it didn't come as a kit? No, it's built on a set of early bird Jenny plans by Dennis Wiley. Now, how many hours would it take for someone to actually get a set of plans sort of sitting there looking in front of them and having it to the stage that you've got this one at? The honest truth is I'm the wrong guy to ask about hours because I didn't keep track and I don't want to know. <laughs> when did you first start building it? Uh, December of 94. No, November of 94. Now, when uh, you uh, got this thing basically together like this, what kind of uh, special tools or uh, area did you need to build anything like that? I'm pretty well equipped. The original Jenny had a lot of beading along all the cowling edges and uh, in various panels and all. I bought a bead roller and I've got uh, I both gas and TIG weld. And this is a welded steel tube fuselage and has a lot of small metal welded fittings all over it. Um, other than that, those are the only really specialized pieces of equipment. Uh, 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 hammering a shot bag to do the brass radiator. This is very nicely finished off though. I mean, you have spent a lot of time and, and effort uh, into this. Um, as far as the covering material, what kind of covering have you used on it? This is entirely polyfiber. And the finished color is polytone. Use polytone instead of erythane because it has a little duller end finish. It looks a lot more like dope instead of the deep polyurethane finish that's so popular today. You know, World War One airplane wouldn't have looked right like that. Why did you build a World War One airplane? I always liked early aviation, um, and I liked the spirit of the barnstormers, which is why I painted it like I did. And cross country traveling, the thing is literally a barnstorming experience. Now, uh, have you flown this very much, then, or? Well, I flew it uh, to from my home in Alabama to Oshkosh a uh, year before last. Uh, it was Grand Champion light plane up there. That was 800 miles each way, and uh, a lot of local running around, and about 420 miles down here yesterday. So you flew it down here? Then? Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't trailer airplanes. What, uh, we're powering this uh, with what? This is a three-cylinder Suzuki. It came in two different variants, the Sprint and the Metro. And um, this is the earlier one, the Sprint. You can tell the two apart because the Sprint has a wider stamped steel valve cover and an entirely different cylinder head. Um, it's uh, some I built from the crank up, try to get it as good as I could, and has a few cylinder head modifications and that sort of thing, but pretty much just a straightforward stock engine. How much would it weigh in at? I don't know. I didn't weigh the engine uh, finished before we hung it in the airplane. The bare block with a flywheel but no manifolds weighs 108 pounds. However, this isn't anywhere near 108 pounds finished. This one's got dual ignitions and the redrive and uh, three carburetors and so on. I'm guessing 150, 160 pounds. What about horsepower do you figure you'd be getting out of it? Know exactly how much horsepower I'm getting out of it. 68.4 at 54.50. And uh, you're using what type of a reduction ratio on it then? 2.12, well, 2.1, what is it? 2.1746. Now that's getting a little on the precise side. Of Call it. it. I mean, we just got 2.2 in the way we went. Let's just say 2.2. Okay. Now, uh, with that, what kind of prop is it? I mean, this has got a nice, a beautiful prop on it. Prop, I'm pretty pleased with the props. The prop came from Props Inc. Fellow name of Mark, I'm sorry, Jeff. Fellow name of Jeff uh, in uh, Newport, Oregon, and he's been a real good fella too. 
Um, wouldn't hesitate to recommend him. Now, with this airplane or with this engine and this propeller combination, what kind of uh, climb rate, cruise speed, and that type of thing are you getting out of it? Uh, cruising heavy, um, loaded overgross. Uh, I run about 60 miles an hour. Uh, climb rate like that is probably 500 feet a minute. Climb rate easily doubles when I fly the airplane light. It is an extremely high drag airplane, and anything you do to increase angle, anything you have to do to increase angle of attack is an instant slowdown. So uh, you know because of weight, and uh, so uh, big big difference. I probably get close to a thousand feet a minute when I fly it with you know three gallons of gas and just me and no electronics, no GPSs, no radios on board. I'm starting to run out of questions here that I can ask. Is there anything else that you can think of that uh, people might be interested in reviewing this? A lot of the little light World War One replicas like this, the guys use front wheels off uh, like a YZ80 Yamaha motorcycle or something. Those have an E cross-section hub assembly and internal brakes, and they don't take side loads very well. If you start to ground loop the airplane, you can easily collapse a wheel, which doubles the damage. Uh, so if you look at the wheels, these have custom-built hubs uh, with four-inch uh, bases to the spoke cone, and uh, consequently these are quite strong, and they won't break under side loads. The brass radiator is something that nobody else tries to do. Uh, we'll polish it later. Right now it's uh, oxidized. I leave the oxidation on it when I'm not showing the airplane as a protective finish. Uh, I wax right over the oxidation and it stays like that in that dull color. But uh, we'll polish it up like your mother's wedding ring later. Um, yeah, I guess there's not too much else. The tail wheel, that's, uh, the tail skid is uh, sprung and steerable. And the mechanisms are all inside the fuselage so that it just looks like a tail skid back there. Um, have individual heel brakes for each side. Carries 9.6 gallons of gas. One of the noteworthy things is the dual ignition system, which is all laid out across the firewall. What you got is a modified Nip and Denso distributor with two magnetic pickups inside it. Each pickup drives a TP45 NAPA module. That's a GM four pin module. Each module drives an IC107 or IC109 NAPA coil. It's a Mitsubishi style coil. Those feed into a MSD coil joiner, which is a racing part that is found on every NASCAR stock car because those NASCAR stockers have dual ignitions pretty much just like this. They don't lose a race because they lost a module, just like we don't want to come out of the sky because we lost a module. And then from the MSD coil joiner, it goes back to the distributor center post and goes to the spark plugs. The only part of the system that's not dual is the distributor cap and the rotor, the three wires to the three spark plugs and the plugs themselves. And those are really very, very trouble free if you practice any sort of preventive maintenance at all. Uh, you never see plug fouling or anything like that on this. It sounds to me like you've got a lot of personal uh, stuff into this uh, airplane. We got a lot of details. You might ought to mention your smoke generating system. Oh yeah, we have a complete smoke system. It works marvelously well. Are you using that like for air shows or just for yourself? No, just generally to turn the local airport IFR when we want to. <laughs> we have the week, we have the Sunday evening air show every weekend at our airport. If someone wanted to get more information on this or wanted to contact you if they were building one of these airplanes, do you, are you adverse to giving a name, address, and phone number where they can reach you? I prefer email. Okay. Which is d h p h k h at aol.com. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. As I say, we enjoy your website. Yeah, good website.